Welcome to AM News. Thank you. Stephanie, what do you make of President Kakame's comments? Is he in any way hinting at Rwanda's involvement in this assassination? Well, they're certainly very provocative. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we know that they are made in, in reference to Karegeya's murder. Mm -hmm. We've heard other similarly unsympathetic uh, and hostile comments made by other officials, Louise Mushikwabu, last week. Um, and I think Kagame knows what he's, what he's doing. Um, it's provocative. He knows that people will likely interpret it the way that they have, which is as a threat, essentially, Absolutely. and also almost a tacit admission mm. that the Rwandan government was somehow involved in Karegeya's murder, and that is indeed um, very shocking. Very strong comments indeed. Now, Stephanie, how safe is South Africa for people like Karegeya? Well, I think it's a very difficult situation that South Africa is in. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly it cannot protect every single individual who faces these kinds of political True. threats. Um, and, and I mean, that's never going to be possible. Mm -hmm. um, what it can do is grant asylum and allow people to then pursue um, uh, activities uh, related to freedom of speech and freedom mm -hmm. of political participation. Um, we do know from a suggested um, uh, city press article that in fact Karagea was warned that the South Africans were aware that there might be an attempt on his life and that oh they suggested that perhaps he, he relocate. Um, mm. And so they have certainly been tracking this. I think they are trying to do the best that they can. but To protect them as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, Stephanie, how important is it for South African government to distance itself from Kagame's uh, comments? Well, so far we haven't seen any, pol any uh, official statements made by the South African government aside from uh, the, the police Absolutely. on the investigation. Mm -hmm. um, clearly there's a difficulty in, in making a link directly to the Rwandan government or to Kagame himself until we have arrests, until we have clear links between those who are arrested and Kagame. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but at the same time, I mean, there's no question that this, this does make the, the relationship between Rwanda and South Africa more difficult. Absolutely. And certainly um, the kind of statement that's made by, by, by a pre sitting president about its opponents mm. um, like that, I think the South African government um, will have to take a very strong attitude. Very, very strong yeah. attitude. And, and, and in fact, in cases like these now, uh, Stephanie, as you've just mentioned, do they not then raise uh, issues of uh, security concerns for South Africa? Well, absolutely. I mean, I think nobody is encouraged or is, is, feels any safer knowing mm -hmm. that there are assassins um, seeking out political opponents of other countries. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and obviously that, that's, that's a very big image issue for South Africa as well. And that will play a role in the relationship between Rwanda and South Africa mm -hmm. because it is humiliating for South Africa to have this recurring again and again. This is essentially the third time that this has happened, although it's really only the first time that the person in, in question has actually been killed. Mm. Um, but no, I mean, uh, clearly this is a... Is, is a big concern for South Africa. Mm. Now, in hindsight, who should really protect these high-profile uh, political refugees? Is it the South African government's responsibility? Well, I mean, South Africa has a policy of accepting, uh, of evaluating the applications of political asylums mm -hmm. and, and then granting them based on, on the evaluation. I think, I think it would be unfortunate if South Africa reacted now by turning down people who have legitimate claims to political asylum. Mm -hmm. That's perhaps what Kagame is looking for, and that's perhaps what would make quite a lot of other difficult presidencies very mm -hmm. happy to see South Africa now turn down um, um, legitimate All political asylum. asylum. Seekers, I think yeah. that should not be the response of the government. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie, some argue that South African intelligence sh should have known about a plot to assassinate uh, Karage. Now, you did mention earlier, is a common fear, though, on South Africa? Should we be tracking our asylum seekers? I mean, we've given them refuge. Should we also be monitoring them uh, on a 24-hour basis? Well, I think we have to be, we have to be clear. There is not, not every single political uh, asylant has this kind of an, faces this kind of a security threat. Mm -hmm. um, we, we do, there, there is, this is a particular case related to the Rwandan government. And, and, and so, you know, you know, we, we, we don't have to worry about this happening to every single person who seeks political asylum. Mm -hmm. I think South Africa did what it could. Again, it did warn Karagea. Karagea also knew that he faced this threat, mm -hmm. as do many mm -hmm. other political opponents who live in exile. This isn't the only country where this has been an issue. It's been an issue in the UK as well. Mm -hmm. So um, South Africa is doing what it can, but clearly it cannot protect every single individual who Absolutely. faces this type of issue. Mm, so what's the next step now for, for, for South Africa and, 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 and Rwanda in terms of amending that relationship? If any? Well, I would imagine that there are some, some serious conversations being had Absolutely. between mm. um, the embassy here and, 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 and Dirko. But, but the Rwandan government, has to be said, is, is, tends to just deny these types of accusations. Mm. If you look at its pattern of denying um, its support for rebels in eastern DRC, mm -hmm. well documented by the United Nations, by other human rights organizations, it just denies. Mm. It's very unlikely that it would do anything differently 
now in the case of Karageya's murder, even if the, the comments made by Kagame are so provocative. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie, for talking to us. That was uh, Program Manager for Conflict Prevention and Risk Analysis at the Institute for Security Studies, Stephanie Walters, talking to us about the latest developments on uh, the statements by uh, Karageya. In other news now, the United Nations Special Envoy to the Great Lakes, Mary Robinson, says the positive atmosphere that prevailed in the DRC following the defeat of the M23 rebels has vanished. Robertson was briefing the Security Council on the latest developments in the implementation of the agreement signed last year. The precariousness of security in neighboring Central African Republic and South Sudan don't augur well for efforts in the DRC.